Preserved in the storerooms at the Yakima Valley Museum are five leather-bound volumes filled with the names from 1909, reminders of the visitors to the White City, and a story of the connection between Yakima and the world. On June 1, 1909, the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition opened on the University of Washington campus in Seattle with 80,000 visitors in attendance. The AYP, as it came to be known, was mandated by the Washington State Legislature to display the resources, products, and advantages of Washington State. It was the perfect venue for showcasing the opportunities in the Yakima Valley. Although much of the fair was complete on opening day, there were a few places still needing improvement, and one of these was the Yakima County Building. In an article for the Yakima Daily Republic on the day following the opening, Warren Irwin told of his disappointment in Yakima's offering. He writes, The Yakima Building is a handsome structure. It wasn't ready in any sense of the word yesterday. It was filled with litter and rubbish of all kinds and contained nothing for the people to see. In the agricultural building where W.L. Wright is in charge of the exhibit, there are three or four cans of fruit. Mr. Wright explained that the exhibit was tied up somewhere and he was unable to get it on the grounds. We learned that the trouble is that there are too many bosses at home looking after the AYP affairs. Irwin does state, however, that the Seattle Fair will unquestionably be a grand success. Seattle is making every effort to entertain the crowds and provide for them. The Yakima County building would soon be complete to greet many of the visitors to the fair and felt like home to guests from the Yakima Valley. It was a two-story rectangular structure ornamented with cases and boxes filled with plants furnished by the women's clubs and school children of North Yakima. Outside, gardens with sagebrush shipped from North Yakima were watered using an irrigation system of flumes and laterals, similar to farmland in Yakima County. As visitors signed the register and walked inside, the smell of fruit was overwhelming. Large displays of cherries, apricots, peaches, apples, and all kinds of berries filled the first floor. Other farm products such as potatoes, hay, and alfalfa were also on view. Visitors could examine ore from mines and products like milled flour, canned fruit, and cruets of cider vinegar. A large relief map of the county was on display, as well as a collection of baskets, blankets, and clothing made by Yakima Indians. Upstairs, weary walkers enjoyed the men's smoking room, filled with easy chairs and settees, and the women's lounge, which included writing desks. Many of the counties did not have their own buildings, so they set up displays in the agriculture building. Yakima had its own building, as well as an additional display in the agriculture building. As stated on the reverse of this postcard, the Yakima County Building, erected for the double purpose of showing the productions from her favorite country and for greeting the people from that section, is an attractive feature in the group of state and county buildings. Although it is now only a memory, a total of 3,750,000 visited what a publicity booklet called the world's most beautiful exposition. There may be larger and more magnificent expositions in the future, but there can never be another like this one unless it should be built in the same location. Exhibits, architectural ideas, amusement creations, foreign folk and customs may be moved, but Mount Rainier, the Cascades, the Olympics, Puget Sound, Lake Washington, and Lake Union, and the skyline of firs must be left behind. And enclosed in these leather-bound volumes are the signatures of those who experienced the splendor of Seattle's first World's Fair.